Alright, hi guys. So um, I'm doing this video on how to set up your market profile chart on Sierra. Now, if if you're using Sierra charts, um, this is exactly how you do it, and it will make life incredibly easier for you. So I'm going to talk you through a couple of the functions, uh, so you understand how I set up my market profile charts and how you can set them up. Uh, so you can get maximum impact from their use. Now, I know some of you watching this video just probably getting into Market Profile. Well, welcome aboard because it's awesome. It will change the way you see markets. So if you've been struggling as a trader, I think you're on the right path. So um, yeah, stay with it basically. So moving on. So I'm going to show you guys how to how to set up uh, your profile chart. So any questions guys, uh, don't hesitate to like leave me comments and that kind of thing. And of course don't forget to subscribe and like the, uh, the videos. And of course uh, don't forget to read the description link below because um, there I've got some really interesting things there. One is you can link with my uh, Discord server. So if you have any questions for me directly, you can talk to me through my Discord server. So um, yeah that's about it in a nutshell so <laughs> right so i'm going to talk you guys through this all right so first and foremost uh working with market profile and this is uh by the way this is a chart of gold so you're going to find that uh, the well it depends on how you want to you know how you want to see it or how you want to visualize it but i like for example i'm looking at gold at the moment now gold ticks quite quickly and you're looking at in most cases 10 cent increments right so for my from my perspective, I like to be able to um, see this. I like to be able to filter my profiles. Okay, and I'm going to show you what I mean when I say filter my profiles. But first, uh, first steps first, let's look at how we get this stuff set up. So first and foremost, you want to go to your studies uh, in Sierra. So if you don't know how I did that, it's a simple right click, studies, and that will open your studies menu. And from the studies menu, uh, you're going to go and look for, uh, you're looking for the profile. So you want to scroll down. It won't say market profile. Um, so you want to scroll down and look for time, price, opportunity, TPO. So you're looking for a TPO profile chart. So you're going to um, add this. So you're just going to click add and it's going to go move in here. Now that gives you a couple of options, you know, in terms of editing the settings. So you just want to go to your settings and decide on what you want to put on each uh, on each row, um, and this will obviously graphically enhance your TPO chart. So let's, uh, for example, uh, you got letter block price increment in ticks. Okay, so like I was saying to you, gold. I like to filter mine, so I put ten ticks. Okay, so basically each letter is the equivalent of ten ticks in a nutshell. So. It, um, or rather I should say each TPO which is each of these letter P's is the equivalent of 10 cents or each of these letter Q's or each of these letter R's or each of these letter S's it doesn't quite matter okay so either way this is your time price opportunity so I prefer 10 ticks now profile period uh, profile time period uh, is one and profile time period length is day so in effect one day is what this profile is so it's a daily profile so I like to look at the profile like you're able to visualize the guts of your candlestick so when you're looking at those candlesticks bars you can actually see what's going on here so if you imagine this is one candlestick bar and you can actually see through the guts hmm. um, well that's kind of my analogy for it <laughs> I know not everyone's cup of tea but it's how I analyze it but anyway so you want to do that and uh, you also want to make sure you get multiple periods uh, based on fixed time okay um, and also you want to make sure you select now when you're looking at rotations I get a lot of questions around the rotations now standardly uh, when you're working with market profile everyone works with 30 minute rotations but okay guess what guys I'm not everybody okay I like to think of myself as unique um, I'm not a I'm not a millennial I'm a little bit older than the millennial generation but I still have some of those millennial habits like I'm special right so I like to think of myself as special so because I'm special I prefer to have 60 minute rotations 
that's it in a nutshell now my experience goes back many many years so maybe it's my experience that has told me that 60 minute rotations are good but I will always run 60 minute rotations on a daily profile and then the next step in the line is uh, let us always start at a primary session you want to make sure this is always yes uh, you want to align okay so this is if you have a volume profile similar to this right so you can align that with your TPO so that's what I've asked it to do is um, I want it to align with the TPO so in this case um, if I said yes then this will align itself inside of the TPO and I don't want that I want it outside okay uh, but I'll on another video I'll do adding volume by price to your TPO but for now let's just focus on the TPO so I want to always make sure this is checked no All right um it's called display TPO count yes okay so what that is is just these numbers on the side you want to see those um, highlight open in profile yes you want to know when the market opens so you want to get that first tick there which is this orange letter on a period and that is the market open so you want to highlight open in profile and you want to highlight TPO value area now the most important thing the single most important thing about time price opportunity is the value area without the value area I think you don't quite have your TPO which is why I could never understand people who just use volume profile to trade well each to his own I guess um, but anyway and I'm not here to criticize what anybody else does but I always find it quite bizarre um, how would you use that if you don't have the rest of your TPO on board it looks it, it feels like pieces of puzzle so it feels like everyone's got the piece but obviously no one has the full picture so everyone's grabbing onto a piece I like the full picture so, so in any way in any case um, you want to make sure the value here is highlighted and you also want to make sure that the you highlight uh, the TPO point of control which is this um, pink uh, side so point of control in statistics is what we call the mode price okay so it's the most occurring price so that's all the point of control is so you want to ensure that you have the point of control highlighted um, you can highlight the value area based on volume I prefer not to do that I prefer to highlight the value area based on the TPOs and of course uh, you want to ensure that so some of these are not um, incredibly important so like for example there's an these two are no because I don't prefer that and also you want to highlight the TPO value area percentage is 70 now you can increase that but 70% is the standard for the statistical bell curve so I prefer to go with 70% uh, right so um, again count two levels at the time for value area no um, so I always like to have that ticked as no and extend value over end of period now you can do that um, I you know again you can you can set this to different things end of the window um, you know whatever or just at an intersection point I prefer end of period so I get a nice little clean uh, looking chart without uh, value area lines running everywhere and posing me the problem of what what support what's resistance that I don't necessarily want to have in my trade um, the next side of it is shade TPO letters block base so that's no um, because we are using letters um, and also the other side of it is um, sub period uh, display oh, make sure everything is letters basically everything you need to everything that gives you an option whether it's letters or blocks just make sure it's letters because we do want to see the letters um, so again some of these are not terribly important so I'm just gonna skip ahead uh, to the important bits um, Highlight the open of each new sub period. Um, I always make sure this is ticked yes. And of course, if I haven't gone through these and you're looking at them, just watch the video again. You can see exactly what I've ticked and you can just tick them down accordingly. So again, moving on, um, you can highlight the midpoint. I don't prefer to highlight the midpoint because I can visually see the midpoint. So I don't think I need to know that to see that. And um, my initial balance area, this is also incredibly important. I prefer to have two for my balance. Okay, and um, again, if you just scroll down the list, I mean, in terms of end period start times, I, you know, I'm in Europe, London. Um, I I trade the FX markets a lot, so I also uh, trade sometimes the futures markets. But I'm still I'm a cable trader, so um, this is not really hugely important for me to change. 
um, again you can add like sub periods so guys who want to split the profiles into particular sessions you can do that here um, moving forward um, I you can have the opening range time um, which of course uh, I've set that to 30 30 minutes it doesn't have to be 30 minutes you can set that to whatever you want to set it to and basically that's it that's the most important things really everything else you can just copy along the way these are only if you're using blocks um, and you want the letters to color so you don't want like one standard color for example um, then you can obviously these become essential but I prefer to have one standard color so everything is perfectly clear and that's it basically so that's how you set up the studies area so once you've done that then you just click OK and apply. Now you can set that to default. So just go back to the settings wheel there. So if you click on that, you can actually do this, save these settings as default. So basically, if you click this, it means that they will always appear every time you load a TPO chart. So it saves you having to do this over and over again. So that's the that's how you get the studies on. So once you've set up all that stuff, your profile should look somewhat like this and one more thing actually is again you when you set your profile you wanted to highlight um, the colors so you want to make sure that it looks like this so you can do that in here which is where the subgraph is and that's pretty easy because you can see the TPO block letters I've set to black the point of control to pink and the value area to gray and that's why it looks that way that's about the only thing you'd need to change and obviously you can see the value area extension lines which I've set to solid two points that's why it's so thick and you can see if I did have initial balance ex um, range extension it would be these colors but I don't have that I only prefer to see the value area I can you know make out uh, what the range extensions are if I'm trading so that's not an issue so that's about the only other important bit that you can use this area to fill out and um, then you're done basically so just hit apply and Bob's your uncle uh, you've got a live working market profile chart to start trading with so any questions guys let me know but I hope this helps you guys in terms of when you're setting up your your market profile chart so again um, this is how you do it if you want to set up your market profile chart using Sierra charts awesome stuff guys see you on another video